Hey everybody, Adam Savage in the Mary Baker Restoration Hangar at Udvar Hazi with my friend Lisa Young. How are you? Good, good to have you back. Oh my God, I'm so excited. You have something fun for me to see today. Very fun. This box arrived from Johnson Space Center in Houston. <gasps> Just the fact that this box said it's a critical space item, looks used, looks like they have flown it in space even though they haven't. I wanted you to see it because I was super excited about it. All right, oh, so all right. what came in here was our new EMU suit. <sighs> Um, we have wanted an EMU suit in the collection for a while, um, but as you know, they reuse them on the space station, so in yes. ISS and shuttle programs. Lots of useful um, parts that can be swapped out. And exactly, so they don't give up parts very easily, and there's no one suit that an astronaut wore that would be their complete space suit. So if an elbow wears out or a foot or a leg, they replace the hardware and keep going or replace the soft goods. So the spacesuits really are like the ship of thesis. Yes. They've been replaced so many times, their original parts are all gone. Right. Okay. And, and I don't have the history of every part here, but we are going to get them. Yeah. Um, and hopefully link that to some of our other program materials. Gotcha. Um, so we went to Houston last summer to look at the suit. The question was whether the parts they had would all look like an assembled suit of the same size, mm -hmm. because it was that many parts are missing and scattered. Um, and we did assemble one. We 3D scanned it, brought it back to the exhibit team, and asked them if we could display this suit. Um, okay. However, there's a lot missing to the suit. Um, there's parts that we got, but parts that we're missing and we'll have to recreate. And uh, my colleague in the exhibits department will talk to you about how he's going to do that, but uh, we've been brainstorming about that. Maybe you can add to that brainstorming activity. Oh, 100%. <laughs> so this is literally, this has just arrived and you guys are figuring out how to attack it as right. a display problem. Right. Figuring out what the pieces are. There's 21 pieces uh, right now that we've pulled out. Right. Um, the most interesting part is the hut. Yeah. Um, so all of the cover layer is real flown material from it really is. a suit. Wow. Uh, the interior parts, because they leave, they would not give us a life support system and we wouldn't want it. Sure, sure. Um, just because of the materials and also just how heavy mm. it is, is a built frame inside. So okay. that will be where we attach it to the new display mount. Okay. So you've seen them getting in and the... ISS where the suit is hung up on the mm -hmm. EVA and, and they, then they kind of crawl up into it. That's the idea they, that it right. supports them all from here. Gotcha. So um, you'll use the same engineering that supports this suit off of the backpack to support this suit off its backpack. Right. Gotcha. And like the other suits, I mean, it looks worn. It has been worn. There's history to it. Yeah. There's little marks everywhere. We're not going to do any um, serious conservation to it. It's going to be pretty minimal. Um, use the environment in the gallery to help stabilize the materials while it's on display. Um, just like the Armstrong suit, it has all of the same materials that are gonna be problematic inside, like the um, polyurethane bladder here, mm -hmm. uh. um, the extra, the extra um, cover layer, and then some other things. Now, there were serious parts missing. So this is the helmet, yeah. um, which I have not looked at, so we're gonna look at that together. <laughs> um, and this came in this nice little Nice little bag that they sent it in. Oh, wow. um, but we knew we were not going to be able to, oh, there's a little bit of stick. stick. I'm gonna leave that for right now and take that off later. Fair. Um, I don't want to do anything. Yeah, a little yeah. fuzz is stuck. So um, they were, we're not getting the cameras. So the infamous ah. sort of like cameras that you see on the, yeah. the helmet, um, that kind of support hardware they needed to keep. Right, right, right. As a matter of fact, they've kept a lot of hardware. So all of the rings for the legs, arms, right. ankles, boots, this right here, you're not going to see hardware existing right now. Okay, so all the rings that allow this suit to be modified for different right, size to snap astronauts, together. those you're going to have to replicate those. Right. Okay. So that's where you're going to come in. So <laughs> are you going to? Are you guys? <laughs> that's gonna, not Lisa's job. <laughs> I love this. Are you going to redo, make cameras that um, fit the helmet? We haven't decided, and you know, there's always this sort of how much do we replicate? Yeah. yeah. Which you know is a further conversation. Um, and that's a curatorial decision, a design decision, how they want to present the suit to the public, uh, whether we can relay that information to the public in a way that they won't think something's either missing or we've recreated something. Right, so right. on the hut, um, there was this, this instrument pack under here, this technical package is missing. So they actually 3D printed their own oh, at okay. NASA. And yeah. then just to be able to use this cover, they, they put this in there for us. So. Gotcha. Obviously, the public won't see that. It'll be in our documentation. Right. Um, we'll look at those materials to make sure they're okay. So the surprising thing for me is how absolutely heavy this suit is. Even compared to the lunar suits, it's really heavy. Fascinating. Um, There's a lot more internal structure. 
Yeah, and so they're floating up there. So you're not meant to stand in your suit because um, you're floating and doing everything with your hands and your right. foot is catching in what they call the foot restraint system mm -hmm. on the shuttle or the ISS or the yellow handles you grab. Right, right, um, right. But the astronauts are all sort of floating around like they're moving in a swimming pool, which right. is what they practice yes, at, exactly, at Johnson. Exactly. So I got to see all this for the first time and really understand how the suit is used. But um, that's why you can have these ginormous sort of what they call waist bearings, hip bearings on the suit when people are using them and you're not, I mean. May you, I? Yeah, you can, you can lift that up. Oh my up. God. But like, yeah, so this is like hanging off your hips or yeah. at least attached to this and hanging off your body. So And this I think, is like the board shorts of a spacesuit. Yeah. <laughs> that exactly, exactly. And you don't, like you don't need to wear legs. You can like just go in pounds. shorts. <laughs> um, 50 pounds. This yeah, is crazy. so creating a mannequin is going to be interesting in our mount system, um, as I said, that you'll hear about because the weight is going to be a definite factor. Right. When you talked about the polyurethane liner does this cause you a problem with off gassing or other stuff like that it does um so it's more stable than the rubber adhesives and materials they used in skylab and apollo fair so they have improved yeah um it actually ages fairly well but it's also replaceable oh. so it's not indefinite you know in a museum environment it should be more stable and would um, actually survive longer okay. than in use. But in use, they're wiping it down with disinfectants. Mm -hmm. They're, you know, the astronauts are in and out of it. It's mechanically stressed from their movements. Right. And so it is a part that is replaced regularly. So like anything we get from NASA, we sort of, um, when it comes here, it comes in its last reiteration. So right. we don't try to change that. So uh, we're going to leave. We didn't actually think we were getting the liner. <laughs> Amazing. So I'm excited, but at the same time, I'm worried that we'll have to do a little bit more um, to the case with air circulation. Right. Uh, we've talked about lower humidity, uh, making sure it's going to remain stable on display. Gotcha. And and most of our mannequins now open up the interior spaces so we're not using blocks of foam or things that would... Uh, inhibit airflow. In, yes, inhibit airflow. Amazing. So we want to definitely do that for this one. So uh, this is going to be a big project that we're going to work on. And because it's replaceable, you guys can keep monitoring it. And if it turns out to be a problem in the future, you could potentially replace it with something that looks equivalent. Or not, because or, the, yep. the visitor is not going to see Oh, it. right. It's all inside. So that's why we thought when we weren't getting it that we were like, okay, well, the visitors aren't going to know. We'll right. know. Yeah. Um, but you're really looking at this outer presentation of the EMU. So we'll see how it does. Um, but I think it'll be fine. We have gloves with this in there from our collection. So we've been able to see that uh, by keeping them in a stable environment, they do survive longer. Gotcha. Um, I do want to show you one of the gloves. So these are also wonderful containers. And I got <laughs> equally as thrilled by this Tupperware container I because it. I know that this is the actual container that ILC uses to transport the gloves between NASA and the suit people. Oh my gosh. Um, so they put the gloves in here um, in these cute little containers when they transport them around. And they flip the gauntlet. I haven't opened this one, but they flip the gauntlet up right. over the actual glove. And then all this hard, feel how heavy this one is too. I mean, <laughs> yeah, these things I are not, no idea. not light. <gasps> oh my God, you can see the interior and everything. This pink plastic is um, something that NASA uses quite often. It's anti-static plastic, but unfortunately it's not really good for collections long term so we usually get rid oh, of it when it comes okay. we do save all the tags and labels and document them and scan them into the computer as their permanent record but we don't use this plastic to store our materials this is just one glove yes one glove wow but it has a lot of hardware with it um so yeah it has this i mean this is really hardcore compared to an apollo suit like I haven't seen the disconnects. Oh my goodness. Looking like this. So this is the outer glove. Right. And, he, and I'm not going to take it off. Yeah, fair. We but you can see, can the, see the inner in the there. inner glove, <gasps> which are my favorite part. The restraint. The, oh, I love them. You the saw the ones I had layer. made. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Because so it has all the aluminum space. So this is where the sizing comes into yeah. um, to affect with the astronauts. Like they'll individually size all their fingers, their joints, their... Katie Coleman told me it takes two days for the dudes to like oh. adjust every knuckle on your hand while oh, you're really? sitting there. Yeah. Well, she would know. I can't believe how smooth that bearing is down here. Yeah, it's beautiful. I so just, I don't know if this was yeah. intact like this when they flew or um, they put it together for us. So we'll find out. And this is a combed silicon material that they 
comb onto the surfaces. Oh, this is applied and grip. then combed. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. So I, I, did, I did learn that when I was down there because we asked them about that. I can't believe it's combed. I went through so much trouble making appliques. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think they just put it on and then comb through it and um, That's make really, that pattern. That is so, the, so much simpler than I this thought. Is, this wants to... So it wants to go by itself. Well, again, that's the it's this thing I've always experienced when I touch any NASA hardware is the the the, the incredible ease of the movement betrays so much precise engineering because that's an airtight bearing. Yeah, I don't know how that works. Like I, my brain just breaks at that idea. So how did this come about? Did you guys just keep letting it be known you're open for parts and you keep pestering them and they eventually like, okay, we can free something up. <laughs> we do have a good connection there, a good relationship <laughs> yeah. with them. Um, and they were aware that, um, that we wanted to do this. The gallery um, is partially sponsored by NASA. So it's a, a big NASA presence in our gallery. Right. Um, and we really wanted to represent the human side of space space in that gallery and this would be the best way to do it so we also will have an education suit um, that you're more aware of we even have one out here in our museum that people have created yeah. out of modern ortho cloth and it looks like the emu but this will be the first um, official artifact that we have so if we can get it together <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Literally and figuratively, yeah. <laughs> um, it will happen. Amazing. But uh, we were a little shocked at you know how many pieces because we did see it together in Houston and they've separated it for us. So um, it's going to be a lot of work before next summer to get this up. Next summer, that doesn't feel like a lot of time. No, I keep telling everybody we have less than a year to go. Less than a year to go. Um, um, and so one of member a member of your team will now take this and attempt to figure out how how to make it stand and look natural and get a pose. Right, so with all of our spacesuits, we partner with our exhibits department. Mm -hmm. um, Lisa can build mannequins, Lisa can tell people what the spacesuits are, but I don't have the welding experience and sort right. of the, um, he's come up with ways to do the external framing, which we've gone back to, because it's just more supportive for the suits on display. Armstrong's the only one that does not have the external framework. It still is balanced underneath Inside, that. With yeah, interior with the skeleton. Intel, interior skeleton. But this one, because all the weight is up here and essentially everything is going to be hanging off of it, um, we have different ideas about how that will work for exhibits. So Chris from our exhibits department will uh, let you know how he's going to put this whole thing together for me. Fabulous, Lisa. This is so thrilling. All right, Chris, this is now your domain, all of these new pieces. Tell me, I love being here at this moment because you are just seeing these for the first time. Yeah, it's very exciting. Okay, so tell me about what tasks you have with these things over the next year. So, as you know, we received all these parts from NASA, yeah. and each one of them connects together to make a full suit. What we're not allowed to get are the connectors because they're still in use. So they're still using pieces of the EMU to build their suits for the ISS for, right now? For flight, yeah, things okay. that are going flight. So we're not allowed to have those connectors because they only have so many left. They're quite precious. And that's that's these yeah. silver things between the arm sections. So like, yeah, each section you have an upper arm and a lower arm and there's a connector between those. Okay. So my job is going to be to re-engineer, recreate that somehow to make a connection point. Um, um, and it looks like the upper arms are already in the suit. Am I correct about that? Yeah, there's, I'll still need to do the attachment ring and add that to the suit. But. Gotcha. Um, how, because they won't let you have this, are you just, are you going to machine a whole pattern that matches this and um, sort of bolt them together? NASA was very nice and 3D scanned all of the parts for us. So we actually have, like, I just 3D printed these off of a scan of an actual part. And that's, that's this part? Yeah. So then, yeah, so there's an upper arm, here's a lower arm, oh, like, wow. connection with the threads. Gotcha. So these are the parts I'm going to, this I'll probably just recreate, but this right. I'm going to try to re-engineer a little bit. Oh and one of goodness. the reasons, I'm going to try to leave a little gap space for airflow through the suit for oh, that's off-gassing. Because yeah. their whole goal is no gaps for air, and yeah, your want goal is tight. more gaps for yeah, air. Yeah, I want it to breathe. Sure. <laughs> Uh, and breathing is how you guys allow the suit to off-gas, but not necessarily to over Where it doesn't itself. Builds up, right, build up. Right, yeah. right. Um, this is a fascinating part. Yeah. The, the, this threading here. It's a lot of engineering, yes. Um, <laughs> you must gain new appreciation every day for looking at these parts. Yeah, it's a lot of complicated stuff. And then as you're talking about the bearing, like everything's so precise yeah. at the same time. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you got you will be replicating the the rings for the arms and the legs and the legs correct and they gave you the boots as well I believe yes we have boots oh my goodness that's so <laughs> exciting um, so 
Your first task is to get this suit all together. Yep. Do you know whether or not you're going to be replicating the lights or not? I'm not, um, sure. not yet. Yeah, we'll, oh. we'll see what the curator wants to do. Oh, my gosh. But if yeah, I can as help you can see you by the picture, it, help, it, it's, it looks yeah, it's, so good. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> I also have never seen the clip in that I saw on the helmet. That, that, oh, yeah, that's the actual a little slide down clip. Yeah. Really, really neat little mechanism. Um, okay, so then once you. I'm curious, uh, just having handled these parts for the first time, it's, what surprises you about them? Oh, how heavy they are. Yeah. Everything is has weight to it. Can I lift? Yeah, just pick that up. It's, you know, each part you think it's a couple pounds. Yeah. So then you get you well, know, the 10, 15 are... pounds on each arm, and then that waste, this pant product is probably 25, 30 pounds. You and, know? It's all, <laughs> and it's missing everything and it's missing from all the here lower. down, yeah. which is probably another so that's just big, shorts. how many pounds? <laughs> right, these are board shorts. <laughs> Um, yeah, the heaviness is incredible. Yeah. Which makes your job, the second part of your job, which is getting this up on a stand, even yeah, more it's, difficult. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of structure to hold it. Well, luckily, the suit has a lot of structure built into it also okay. with, with the hard upper torso. Can we go take a look? Yeah, let's go look at the torso now. All right, so this is a hard upper torso, right. torso you were going over with Lisa. Yeah. Um, so they have a wood block box in here right. just created for weight, basically for when they're doing their training in the pool. So it's similar to what oh, they're actually wearing. I see. Right. So it's not the actual structure inside. It's just replicating for the same amount of weight that they experience like yes. inertially. So what this gives me is an opportunity to use get rid of this and make my mount where I'm going to replicate that size. But this that's going to be my main structure going into the the suit for the mannequin. Okay. So and everything will come down from here to the base. Gotcha. And then the rest of the suit is just going to dangle. Hang off of yeah, that. basically dangles off this backpack. Oh, that's great. I have to say having one replica EMU, it's one of the easiest suits to hang because the yeah. hut just gives all that form to the upper torso. Exactly, yeah. So that's how they get into it. This is part is hung on a rack right, and then right. they, they come up they through. swim up into it, yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. But it's not. It's still not quite that simple. You're hanging it off this backpack, but he's going to have arms, arms, and those arms with the gloves are going to weigh dozens of pounds. pounds. Correct. Yeah. So are you are you going to build a structure inside to hold um, those? We will up, have or? like a an airflow mannequin, so like not a solid mannequin, but okay. just kind of to fill out the form, mm -hmm. give it space, but also let it breathe air. So that air that mannequin will allow air to flow through and allow it to uh, uh, basically kind of, evacuate, not yeah, build up. Yeah, where gases aren't building up in it. Will that and that mannequin is that fiberglass? Is that metal? Um, most of that'll be ethafoam and then like oh. aluminum. Oh, okay. And that so you're not hoping to hold the arms up. You're no, everything is just going to kind of be relaxed, gotcha. you know, in its natural pose. Amazing. Um, you must be so thrilled. Yeah, this is very exciting. For I mean, me. I look at this and I think, oh my god, you get to take this thing apart, pull this thing out, replicate yeah. its structure, but build your own structure into it. That sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, I've dubbed it spacesuit summer for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love seeing the EMU patch up close because yeah. there's been so many iterations where they're printed on fabric. This one's embroidered onto they're fabric. They're great. Yeah, NASA's very good about their patches. They like, really, <laughs> really are. No, no, no. It's totally awesome, Chris. This is this is thrilling. I can't wait to see this up. And this will be up in the galleries uh, by this time next year. Yeah, less than a year from now. Wow. That sounds like a tight schedule even. It is, and everything else we do.